it's, uh, it's another deadline day as you can see uh, you know everybody's here actually it's not really a deadline for us it's a, a deadline for uh, for the guys that are getting the Xbox thing going and here we are so this is the box this is uh, Ego Draconis the collector's edition it was uh, only released in a few countries like this and it featured a, a, a big porcelain like knight uh, in it unfortunately this one has his legs broken like many hundreds of them and there was only a few thousands of them made uh, it was uh, this is what it looked like this is one of the few remaining pieces that is actually intact and uh, it was made in China as you can see and we're very happy and you can open letters with it so it's pretty cool you look at the back of the box what do you see it says free the dragon within you and it's because in this game you could turn yourself into a dragon and it's also claims that you have dynamic quest structure and uh, all kinds of cool things which uh, which feature in an epic role-playing game. Looking back at this now and thinking of what was supposed to be on the back of that box, uh, it's clear that we had to make really a lot of cuts actually. Uh, I remember that I, uh, I went to the UK, pitched it to a major publisher and uh, the team had been working very hard on preparing a, a video and this video uh, was supposed to uh, show the vision behind the game, so what the old things were that you were going to be able to do in the game. And so it showed you that you could uh, turn yourself into a dragon at will, anywhere in the game. And you had massive, epic uh, air-to-ground dragon combat. Well, what we actually did, was not that was not a single particle, that was just launching a fireball every 20 milliseconds at the enemy, and that made it look like a continuous stream of fire. Just a small moment, you really felt powerful. Torching the earth. You couldn't target anyone uh, accurately, you were just spewing fire everywhere and you couldn't really aim to like and yeah it killed everyone but it was not really it was not really fun or anything. Yeah. We allowed it for one boss fight. Uh, it was against the Dragon Terror Patrol. It was this group of five guys that specialized in killing dragons and uh, and they had made a device that prevented you from turning into a dragon. And to stop you from uh, from disabling it, one of the guys had swallowed it. But if you killed him, then the thing was disabled, so you could turn into a dragon and kill the rest. But I don't know if anyone ever actually realized that you could do that because it was not very explicit. They just said that, and yeah, but they were really yeah exactly. They were they were because they were really really strong. They were kicking your ass. But if you knew that, that you could just kill one of the five and then from then on turn into a dragon and kill the rest, then it was an easy fight. But I don't think anyone ever found out. But the Dragon Turf Patrol, that's also short for... DTP. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's how smart we are. So yeah, that was a little wink. You wanted to make fun of the publishers actually? Or... No, 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 it was an homage to them. Because, well, yeah, I mean, that's what we do. No, 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 no we never make fun of anyone. That's not our style. Uh, that you could also turn yourself into a half dragon, so that was a form that we thought up uh, so that you would be able to also turn into a dragon in a dungeon, because if you try to fly in a dungeon it's rather painful. I think it was balancing wise, because I mean, people would always be half dragon, there's no downside to that being the half dragon. He got back into the game uh, as a half dragon, uh, as an elf dragon I think? Mm -hmm. Dragon elf, yeah, dragon elf, <laughs> <laughs> that was the name. Yeah, we did reuse a model for a well, species on the ones on... We didn't really reuse them. At first he looked like this. I think it was fun to play, but it wasn't special enough. That in was the end, uh, I think we just stopped using them because as we started fleshing out the normal uh, hero, the, the, the warrior, the melee skills, etc., we, we noticed there those are actually more fun than uh, the half dragon, which only had a limited set of skills. According to programmers, design couldn't do it because uh, it was unbalanceable. And according to design, programs couldn't do it because it was too <laughs> slow. Exactly, uh, yeah. the, the Xbox, the Xbox didn't do it. We had, to remove, like, yeah. we had to remove like half the characters from the animals. Yeah, it was disgusting. All the, like, the animals in Broken Valley as well, like all the animals, they had to be removed because that was too many characters in the same area. You know the killer bunny that appears when you kill 30 bunnies? <laughs> Then yeah, there were not enough bunnies in the game to make it appear. So, and because it was an achievement to kill it, we had to make sure it was in. So we had to put bunnies back in. 
to make sure we had at least 30 so you could uh, do it? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Uh, we had this half dragon, so we also had a very, very, very extensive combat system which featured uh, all kinds of moves that you could do, including blocking and parrying and evading and jumping in all kinds of directions. And it all looked very neat. Um, we had uh, multiplayer, uh, which was a big feature, so the quests were going to be done such that you could play them in single player, but you were going to have a separate campaign, so you could play in multiplayer. We started off with a different branch in multiplayer, and it worked-ish until halfway, and then we needed more focus on the other parts of the game, so the focus shifted away from multiplayer. And then eventually it became way too much work to get multiplayer back in. Because they couldn't make the quests interesting enough with multiplayer, it's a lot more complex, as we're noticing now. Well, let's just say it's design reasons, but the technical stuff was an, an added bonus when we scrapped it. Because yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of work, a lot of work. But it was actually working. Yeah. Multiple dragons, the physics sinking, it was all there. <laughs> I think we had like 30 or 40 uh, large levels that we were going to do, where in the end I think we ended up with 10 or so, or f no, even less. Yeah, this is, uh, you remember those? Uh... I do remember, I do remember, I made most of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's too bad, huh? Yeah. Interesting story. Most of it got scrapped, though. Yeah, I remember. I mean, I still have the designs right here. <laughs> I remember I built this whole city, Elegant City, and then. Uh, it took like six months to build that thing, and then suddenly someone came and said, yeah, look, so it looks good, but we're gonna scratch it. When I see you holding this stuff, it looks like the design phase was already pretty far. Right? Pretty much, man. We, we, we had designed a lot of it, actually. But for some reason, it got scratched, Frank. Do you remember why? Yeah, yeah, I remember why. Apparently, we couldn't make it to the deadline, and back then, we were making Flames of Vengeance. And, uh, you know, we might as well just kept it in and uh, made it better with Dragon Knight Saga, yeah, like we did with the rest of the game. I remember you cried that day. I cried. I cried. You cried. I guess that's what happens in the game, video game industry. No, only to you. <laughs> You're working yeah. a lot slower these I'm days, working a lot you? slower. I'm not making yeah. as much content. Yeah, that's better now. It really looked awesome. Really a lot of it did look good. Look good. It's a black ring count. Beautiful area. We had an enormous world, we had a really, really, really big world, which uh, was necessary because we had all these races that we were going to cover. You had the elves, and the dwarves, and the orcs, and uh, the undead, and the imps, and uh, the lizards, and well, all the races that were ever present and the previous divinities were present in this game world. Uh, as a dragon knight, you went around um, the entire world and met with all the races, um, Collecting supplies. and uh, you had to convince all these races to send a delegation to the battle tower and your battle tower would become sort of your uh, headquarters or where all your armies would amass uh, and once you had a big enough army to actually take on uh, Damien and his armies actually I forgot about that uh, you, you would have taken all these armies and then in an RTS type of gameplay uh, you would uh, attack with, with uh, humans, dwarves, elves, uh, other dragon knights uh, oh, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of work because uh, just for the end game, you need to implement an entire RTS. And not only that, you need to implement a tutorial so that people know how to play the RTS. Uh, and you're stepping away completely from a game that already had two genres. Because uh, you had the, the ground uh, RPG, uh, regular gameplay, and then you had the dragon action combat sim. We had a battle tower, which was like a central hub where you were going to accumulate not only uh, troops to help you in the end fight, but also cyclopses who were kind of servants that were going to serve you in this tower and you could build your, you could customize the tower like it would be a sims uh, type of game. So it was fa fairly extensive. Initially when we were pitching this game we were trying to sell it to the large publishers, but they weren't interested. They didn't believe that a team from Belgium was capable of doing that. Actually one of the publishers even told us that uh, Belgium was renowned for not having any artists and uh, I was so shocked by that, that when I came back, I, I vowed that I was going to put him in the game in a not-so-flattering role. And we did, actually. We made him the guy who is soul-forced uh, to a chicken. And uh, the game, uh, the player in the game is killing chickens all the time. So this guy is total in panic that he, his soul-forced chicken will be killed. So the, the pitching to the large publishers didn't work out, despite the best efforts of, of creating this, uh, this movie that we had done, which showed all of, uh, of the features. 
And uh, so we ended up with publishers with less money and that meant that we had to make a smaller game. But we said, let's keep the ambitions high, basically like we originally intended them and see where we end up. And that meant that eventually we had to do a lot of cuts, but it also meant that during the production we, got, uh, we found ourselves under a lot of pressure. It's quite hot in here, you can feel the tension because uh, a game production is, is divided into different milestones and these milestones, uh, that's where you get your money from the publisher if you meet them. So it was important for us that we met every single milestone, but in the back of our mind we wanted to put more in the game than was actually uh, originally the intention. Hi, my name is Sven. I will be presenting you Divinity 2 Ego Draconis on Xbox 360. Hi John, um, I'm going to give you an overview of what we've done in the last month. Hi John, this is Milestone 3, the Broken Valley 2 Vertical Slice. Every single thing which you see on the screen has been redone. It even got to the point that it, uh, there was a moment in the development that I, uh, I went to present the game to the publisher and uh, the producer and the development director started asking all kinds of, of nasty questions and hard to answer questions. And I told them, yeah, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, trust us, we've made RPGs before. And they said, no, we want to see it now because we think that the game is really deeply in trouble. And uh, so, and I had the impression that actually they were ready to cancel the game. So we agreed that I was going to show them that the game was further ahead than what they could see at the moment by demonstrating some gameplay. And I came back to Larry and I didn't tell anybody that they, of these cancellation plans that were running around in their heads, or at least that they had given me the illusion of. Uh, but uh, I said to Farhan, our lead designer, I need to have a movie. Uh, at least a series of movies which shows multiple quest outcomes and you have two weeks to make it and it's rather important that I get this. And so I remember Farhan was quite angry at me because he said the engine is not ready, it's not in the state. I said well I still need the movies, I mean it's for whatever reason. And so he came through, he made the movies but it was, he didn't have such an easy job making the movies as far as I remember. Are we rolling? All right. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Farang Nomla speaking from Larian Studios. Uh, Alright, hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Farang Nomla, lead designer at uh, Larian Studios. Alright, are we rolling? Excellent. Hello ladies and gentlemen, um, this is Farang Nomla speaking. Hello John! <laughs> this is the actual footage. This is, uh, what's that? Uh, road, giving me a sword and something. Yeah, I was, I was pretty wasted actually. It was like at night. We had a couple of beers and everything, and still recording the quest. Oh, I'm inside a rock. Look at this, John. This is beautiful, John. Look at this. This is this is beautiful. Oh, look, there's a cross here. What does that cross do? It's telling me I have a new quest event. It's like chasing the dragon. Puff the magic. <laughs> like, you know, eventually Sven would, you know, like, bribe them or somehow just, you know, go out with them and everybody would get wasted and then somehow the milestone would be approved. So, yeah, this is uh, what's left over from um, our QA team, our quality insurance guys, who are doing the testing for uh, Dragon Knight Saga and Ego Dracoons. Uh, we're going to have to set it up again for uh, Original Sin and Dragon Commander. So we had testers, uh, I think we had over 50 or something, we had testers in Germany, in India, in uh, Romania, in Ireland, in Canada, and obviously also in Belgium. Would have been a better idea actually to put them all in Belgium, but that's a publisher thing. We started getting help from our publishers and also from um, third party companies like, uh, there was one in Asia, uh, which they, those guys weren't too good, they were always focused on little details where we wanted uh, different feedback but they would make up these bug reports that, that made no sense at all like one of the epic ones is the the duck is look at what she makes uh, she's in imperial wide and that's that was the bug report and we kept sending it back to the guy like what do you mean the duck and he said let the duck problem with duck <laughs> but no that's that's all we got out of so it. What was the problem then? We don't know. It's it's still a mystery. The, the duck, it looks fine. It, it goes like this. It's, there's no problem with the duck. It's just so uh, now we're making this uh, this anthology box. Uh, this is the prototype actually. And it's it's bringing back a lot of memories because it spans 10 years of divinity. Yeah, that's right. Matthew with a stick. He's famous. He pokes with the stick, see? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I think you heard someone. 
Yeah, he actually had a stick and a knife. An exact replica of the stick made by Alex uh, was placed in the game. Larian Studios closes in the summer for like two weeks. And usually when we close, we turn off all the electricity. Now, we also turned off the electricity of the big giant fridge. After two weeks of heat, it was like something died up there. And I remember Lynn had to call a special team to clean it. It was really these guys in white suits going upstairs. It was amazing. At a certain moment, there was like rats running everywhere. And you know, every morning when we'd get in the room, it would actually smell like weed. But it wasn't, it was just the dead rats. It was really awful. But apparently you still had fun. So we had plenty of fun. It was like the, the, the time you went to the Ardennes. Oh yeah. Is that a good example of that? That, that is a pretty... Jesus. Yeah. It was a pretty nice uh, 19th century uh, building. That really looked cool. And I believe the last day we found out that curtains had caught fire and uh, a lot of things were broken. There were, there were wine stains on the uh, old carpets. You know, like they had really old carpets, like tapestries that were more than 100 years old that had uh, quite some damage to them. The music was going outside, the window was open, Kirill was playing very loud. <laughs> we were sitting in the bloody jacuzzi with like 15 guys in a jacuzzi which was meant for four persons. <laughs> and there was another jacuzzi next to it which was with plenty of cold water in which Ken had jumped. <laughs> this was middle of winter also, right? But yeah, not a lot of people were here. I still remember that day. Good day. We had a lot of fun. We really had a lot of fun. But we also had a lot of hard times and, and a lot of work. And there were a lot of sleepless nights and the, the sleepless nights that were not always caused by uh, the actual work, but uh, sometimes there were the strangest things. I mean, uh, I remember uh, Kirill flooding the office and then getting a phone call at 3 o'clock at night by a panicked artist saying, Sven, Sven, come to the office! Ever, there's water everywhere! The water was really streaming down the stairs everywhere. It was seeping through the ceiling. It was Flooded. All the ceiling tiles were damaged, uh, all the carpets, everything that was standing on the floor was ruined. Do you now change your approach on, on making the RPG? The thing is, you always know where you start, but to be honest, you never know where you're going to end. So, my, the best approach I've learned is that you, you try to have fun as you make it, and then hopefully that fun is going to brush off on the player, he's going to have fun too. And, so, and you do your best. What more can you do? Despite all the, the overtime, the long hours, the, the fights, the everything, at the end of the day, it, it's still a, an awesome group of, of like-minded people who, who get to make video games. I mean, how many people can say that? Yeah. Well, 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a stick now. <laughs> <laughs>